Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking all about some spaces, some ideas, mistakes people make when they're trying to make their home look luxurious, but they're really just kind of making it look like a mess. We're gonna get into it. We've got some things to talk about, but before we get into this video, you know I am always encouraging you to design your home for you, not to just be luxurious and impress other people. So I want you to keep that in mind as we go forward while we talk about all of these spaces and how we can make them more luxurious and a little bit more useful. One of the first things people always think of when they think luxury is like, bigger and better and more impactful because a lot of people look at bigger things and they're like, oh, it's more expensive. So they wanna have the biggest thing they can or the most play with height and scale. And that's not always true or it can sometimes be really difficult to create. Here's a space that's a perfect example of that. You can see we've got this giant, tufted headboard and tufted headboards were big for a while they fell out a little bit because people associated tufting with glam even though like that's absolutely ridiculous because tufting is has been around as long as furniture has been but that's not the point i like this headboard because not only is it tufted it has wings and if you're going to do tufting do wings on the headboard because it immediately makes a piece feel a little bit more classic and therefore more timeless so i think this is really great i like the color of it i actually like the wall color of this space i think is really pretty but the issue we're having here is this headboard is so big and these lamps are so big that they're making the bed actually look really low and that makes it feel a little bit uncomfortable, right? Like there's too much of a play in scale. Something else I wanna point out to you here is actually the height of the nightstand in comparison to the height of the mattress. Now, if you like really high nightstands, that's okay. But generally you want the top of the nightstand to be level with the top of the bed. And here the nightstands are taller and then we have taller lamps on them, which makes it even more difficult. This space is feeling like not very luxurious because it really can't be used. If you're sitting in bed and you go to turn on the lamp, you cannot reach it. You're sitting up, you're getting out of bed to turn the lamp on because it's so tall. And the lamp's positioning with the headboard is great, but the bed height is way too low for this to actually be usable. Now, I love these lamps. And as a matter of fact, out of everything that's happening in this space, these are the one thing that I would definitely pick up at the store. I would bring them home with me and I would have been like, I scored a deal. You'll never believe what I found. These are epic, amazing, insane because I love them. But this is just maybe not the place for them. With lamps that have a lot of height like this, they usually work better on a buffet or a con console table where there's a large piece of artwork between them or even a television of some sort, that would be a better place for these lamps because they're just a little bit too tall to be used on nightstands. For example, if we're laying in this, maybe not we're laying, but if you were laying or if I was laying independently and we looked to the side or we looked up, we would not be seeing lamp, we would not be seeing lampshade, we would be seeing the light bulb. That would be the number one thing we see and we might as well just be staring into the sun. So for this space, I would actually get a box spring of some sort to raise the mattress up a little bit to be closer to the level of that nightstand's top and then I would opt for a smaller lamp. Now the next thing people definitely think is luxurious but is such a design mistake is actually having too much space. Having too much space is actually so much worse than not having enough space, right? If you have a smaller area, it feels cozier, you can fill it more easily with pieces of furniture and those spaces can often have more defined layouts and floor plans that you have to stick to. So you're limited in what you can do and that limit actually makes it easier easier to design and decorate. But when you have a very large space that can fit a lot of furniture and very big pieces, it just sometimes feels a little bit off or like the scale is not correct. Here's an example of a space that has way too much space in the space. You can see it's a living room and we've got a lot of modern things happening here. You can definitely see that the owners of this space put effort, a lot of time, and a lot of money into purchasing these items, okay? It looks nice. The first thing is I would probably mount this television on the wall. I'm just not the biggest fan of like a TV sat on something, but maybe that's not an option. They like it, I think it actually works. And this is a big TV, but it is actually playing nicely because we have a lot of glossy black accents in the space that reference back to that. We've got a sofa off to one side and you can see here that we have a coffee table with like an end table kind of next to it but look at how far away from the sofa this is it's definitely pushing three feet and if we're sitting on the sofa you couldn't even 
pick your legs up and set them on the coffee table. Not that I advise you to do that, but just as a point of reference, like you couldn't even reach it that way. It's way too far away. The spacing between a sofa and a coffee table, it needs to be 12 to 15 inches in order for you to be able to get in between it to sit down on the sofa and actually reach the table to be able to set something down on it, whether that's a drink or a television remote or set your book down, whatever, you need to be able to reach it. In this space, you're not reaching anything. And it's the same thing with all of the other spacing between that coffee table and the other sofa. It's way too far away and do not even get me started on these chairs. I also want you to look at the spacing here between both of the chairs and the table that's between them. You couldn't even reach that sitting in the chair because of this kind of rolled arm detail these chairs have. There's way too much space here. So what would I do in that instance? Well, bring the coffee table over to the sofa, bring the chairs over to the coffee table, and we'd actually have a walkway of about three feet behind these chairs, meaning you could access this door so much easier. And it's making this room feel like so spaced out, like everything is just too calculated and not properly thought out, but overly thought out at the same time, it just does not feel comfortable or luxurious. Focus on having that 12 to 15 inch gap between the edge of a sofa or seating piece and a coffee table. That's the kind of golden rule there. Stick to that and the space will work beautifully, but also be very functional and feel luxurious. As a matter of fact, I truly believe that luxury is all about the way you live in a space, the way it functions for for you and the way you interact with it and how convenient it is. Those little features are truly luxury. It's not just about looking expensive or showing off. I'm constantly trying to share that and get it across in my videos. So if you haven't already, please take a moment and join us here by clicking the subscribe button. It costs absolutely nothing. There's no fees associated with subscribing to this channel. So be sure you join us here, become a part of the Le Chic family and turn on your bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. And it's also super important to give this video a like. It really helps us out, helps our content get shared, and helps our channel grow. With that said, let's talk about the next space, the next thing that people often think is luxurious, but sometimes is not always. It's definitely interesting, and this space is no different. And that thing is different is being different or getting something different for the sake of it or overly customizing something just so it's not like everything else. Here's an example. This is a kitchen that has definitely been personalized. It is definitely interesting and I appreciate the effort. If nothing else, take that away from this. But this kitchen is very personalized and we've got some interesting colors happening here. We have a purple oven that matches the purple window trim. We have this really interesting finish on the cabinetry and the space is almost giving me like a steampunk kind of a vibe. And that's cool if that's what you really like. I say go for it. But in this case, it's really customized, really personalized. And sometimes these finishes are not always the best option to achieve the look or the goal you are after. I actually think this aged steel look to the cabinetry is really interesting. But for me personally, I would have done this as a material on the backsplash. That way, if you got tired of it, you could easily change it out as where this kitchen would require all new cabinetry to update it. And hey, maybe you say, I really love it and I'm never gonna wanna update it. I hear that all the time and, and I love that for you, but it may not necessarily be accurate in the long term. So something like this that's overly personalized, it doesn't look luxurious, it looks specific. Here's another kitchen that's super interesting, a little bit different, but it is very timeless. This kitchen is all black and that's not for everyone, that's okay, but it's different in a way that is not jarring and is not just current right now. This is a space that could easily be timeless for the long term if you really liked black. And there are also elements here that would be easier to change than there would if you did something really, really customized. This kitchen has some interesting features that make it feel really luxurious for its usefulness, like under cabinet lighting. That's always a really convenient feature to have in a home that makes using a space super functional. You've also got a really beautiful stone countertop here. You do have a waterfall edge, which not everybody loves, but it definitely is done in a classic material that works with the space. So it has a timelessness about it. You have some affordable options like a ceramic tile backsplash. And this cabinetry may not even be fully custom and that's okay, it looks great. But I want you to also see here that the cabinetry 
symmetry above the counter here is actually recessed in so you get a little bit of a play in dimension. All of that's really fun and the kitchen feels different. It feels unique and vibrant in a minimal way and that's really cool. This feels luxurious as where the other kitchen feels a little bit customized, a little bit overly personalized and not necessarily timeless in the long term. Something else that people think is very luxurious but can often lead you down the slippery slope of a space being too busy or feeling crowded or just not luxurious is too much detail. Interior designers love detail. I mean, it's those fine little elements that we absolutely adore to incorporate into spaces, right? We all love that. The details matter, but when you have too many of them, it becomes overwhelming like this space. I want you to have a look at here and count with me. We have so many different finishes happening here that it is overwhelming and we can't focus in on any one natural element. So we have brick as one element, we have this tan wall color as a second, which is very pretty and I actually really like it. We have these chocolate brown drapes that they kind of read as purple, but they're brown. We have wallpaper on the ceiling and that's number four. We have this interesting green finish behind the sofa. That's five, the wood floor is six. And let's look at another view of the space here where you can actually see we have an entirely different wall color that's green, that's seven, and the cabinetry is another color that's eight. One more view shows the bar, which is a dark wood, and that's number nine. Nine finishes in one space is too many. It's way too many. Each wall in the space is a different color. The ceiling is something different you cannot focus on anything. And the space actually has some really great natural features that in my opinion speak louder than having all of this luxury detail incorporated into it. The brick, I don't know if it's original or not, but I can tell because of the dimensions of it that it is real brick. So I would have let that speak louder and I love the industrial venting this space has. So I would have taken that route. I probably would have taken that bar color, that dark wood and used that as the floor. So we had a moodiness and an industrial vibe to this space I think would have really played beautifully. And hey, if you like a white kitchen, go for it. If you like a black kitchen, go for it. Do something along those lines to enhance the moodiness of the space. It would have let all of those really beautiful, authentic details stand out as where here I'm seeing nine different finishes everywhere. And this space also has like no furniture in it, right? We have a sofa and a TV console. So we don't even have any furniture, but it's already overwhelming. And there's no accessories either, or we aren't really noticing them because of how busy everything else is. Sometimes less is definitely more. Something else we need to talk about that people think is luxurious and definitely is but can be overdone is custom. Custom furniture, custom upholstery, custom drapes, fabric, everything. Sometimes less is more like we just said and you don't always have to a lot budget for something custom because it may not be in your best interest. This space here, I actually really like this. This pattern is very interesting to me and I think the way that we have pulled this mustard tone out of it on the sofa is really cool, but I want you to notice that the arm of the sofa is actually upholstered in the same fabric. This is a completely custom sofa here with these two tones and that's cool, it plays really nicely, but we've put some budget into this sofa. However, when I cut to this image and I want you to take note of this, you can see we have these really vibrant red drapes, a color we've pulled from the sofa. So we have a lot of coordination happening here, which is great, but we are just seeing red. It's a very vibrant color. And when done like this, it's all you really see. So we've spent a lot of money on customizing the sofa, whereas I would have preferred to see all of these drapes not be red and just be this pattern like you can see here on these outer edges. I also do of course wanna point out how close these drapes are to all of these heating or radiator units. We wanna make sure there's a certain amount of clearance there to provide safety for this space. And a lot of these drapes are overstacked so that we can have the pattern and have the red drape. So eliminating the red drapes and just having pattern drapes would have been really great. I think so much was done here, but that customized sofa ate up probably too much of the budget. And this color is something that's pretty 
available. It's something that's kind of common, this mustard tone. A lot of people really like it. I do too. So I would have just gone with the standard sofa in this color as opposed to having something custom made that used this pattern and taken the, the budget from that and done custom drapes in the pattern that would have filled the space. I think that would have been a better use of customization than going for a custom sofa. That sounds really luxurious and it may very well be, but having something that is just a little bit easier that isn't customized could have saved them a little bit on the budget that they could have used other places. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure you share with us in the comment section down below because we want to hear from you. Tell me, what's one thing you think everyone believes is luxurious but usually isn't? Because I want to hear from you and be sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We also know that you know someone that they could probably use a little bit of this advice be sure you share this video with them because friends help friends and we will see you in the next one. Won't we, buddy? Mm -hmm. <laughs>